Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. I'm Mel McDonald, the Community Manager at Ground News, and I'm happy to be presenting here today at the Charleston Conference for a second year, alongside Library Director Michael Wells from Wilmington College and Michael Walmsley from Baker and Taylor. Today we'll be discussing how new technology can act as an antidote to polarization and divisiveness in today's news environment. To provide a brief introduction to Ground News, it's an online news comparison platform that was founded in 2018 by former NASA engineer Harleen Court and award-winning app developer Suk Singh. The product was developed in response to the changing online media landscape. Uh, while many online news feeds today follow the trend of using addictive algorithms to direct attention to a very narrow range of perspectives, Ground News makes it easy to compare over 50,000 different news sources so readers can break out of echo chambers that they might find themselves in online. Ground News provides bias, factuality, and ownership data to help readers analyze the news coverage that they're getting and read from multiple perspectives, giving them a better understanding of context, credibility, and what journalists are reporting from all sides of the political spectrum. By making this information readily available, we hope that readers are equipped with to understand the context from which a perspective is arising. And since launching, the app and website have been adopted in classes across the country to help empower students and faculty demonstrate core media literacy concepts and develop the skills required to uh, navigate today's online news environment and become fully informed on the issues that are affecting today's society. While there's a lot to unpack on this topic, we'll just be focusing on a few things today. First, I will share an overview of um, the current challenges affecting today's online news environment and how they contribute to divisiveness. I'll also be speaking about the influence of online news echo chambers and the importance of diversifying one's news diet. Then Wilmington College's library director, Michael Wells, will share his personal experiences using Grow News as a tool to resolve some common challenges he experienced at two different institutions. And finally, we'll conclude the presentation by addressing how libraries might take a leadership role in adopting the technologies that can help bridge these divides. So while there are a number of challenges affecting the online news environment, we'll be focusing on the consequences of partisan media and echo chambers um, and follow up with some suggestions about how to meet these challenges. So over the past several years, we've noticed the increasing trend in readers consuming news from digital platforms. A Pew Research study conducted between October 2019 to June 2020 found that 60% of respondents reported getting news from a smartphone, computer, or tablet very often. And when breaking this down by age, the trend is even more significant as 71% of respondents between the ages of 18 to 29 often turn to digital media for news. Um, and that number is 67% for those in the 30 to 49 year old age group. They also found that one in five US adults reported that they get their political news primarily through social media feeds, as opposed to other options. So accompanying the increase in news consumption from online and digital sources, there's also been increasing concerns about the impact of algorithms on worsening partisan divides. The algorithms that drive engagement on social media platforms often show users information that confirms their ideological biases and encourages them to stay on the platform for longer periods of time. But algorithms um, don't do much to address the spread of misinformation. They don't highlight or uh, draw attention to news stories that are out of context. And it can actually make it very difficult to trace where a given piece of information has come from when it's just appearing on your social media feed from these algorithms. The heightened competition of digital news platforms has also encouraged traditional news outlets to take more partisan positions. They found that catering to a specific audience kind of helps, that their, helps ensure that their content remains competitive with other outlets, but this also means that uh, readers might only read one side of the story and that these outlets might actually opt out of reporting um, on certain political issues if they don't seem relevant enough to their dominant audience. A number of studies have found correlations between consuming partisan content and an increased sense of polarization and divisiveness against political parties. And studies have also found that people's attitudes 
shift to become increasingly aligned with the news that they consume over time. So this kind of draws attention to the issue of um, only see, seeing one side of the story can actually lead to more intense feelings of polarization and certainty that one side is correct over the other. So our way of making sense of the information presented online needs to adapt to meet these challenges in a way that actually helps readers navigate the news environment without getting stuck in echo chambers. Um, so we've tried to create an intervention that's scalable and able to address the growing need for active discernment and media literacy skills so that the bulk of information available online today can actually be navigated um, in a way that gives readers control over the news that they're reading and the full story of any contemporary issue. So that's why Ground News is being used as a tool in classrooms to highlight coverage bias and credibility uh, and making those additional perspectives easily available. So I'll just go briefly over some of the main features of Ground News and then give an overview of a study that was conducted by Duke University that used Ground News as a tool to explore how unobtrusive measures uh, can actually mitigate effective polarization. So as previously mentioned, one of the core functions of Ground News is its comparison tools. In contrast to social media or on other online feeds, Ground News collects related articles into a single event so coverage can be compared between um, left-leaning rated news sources and right-leaning rated news sources. So readers can just scroll between headlines and entire articles to kind of corroborate information and get um, a full idea of who is saying what about a given issue. It also provides coverage distribution data. So if a user tends to read news from only one side of the political spectrum, they can easily access stories that they might have missed um, because those news sources that they tend to read from chose not to cover them due to political bias. Ground news readers can also easily compare the bias ratings of a given news source. We source all bias ratings from three independent organizations that are de dedicated to rating media bias. So in this example, someone could search a source like CNN and see how three of these organizations have rated that um, outlet and why. So on the, the right side of the screen here, you can see if you tap on the All Sides uh, website, readers are able to quickly engage in a process of lateral reading by seeing how all sides analysts have assessed the CNN outlet uh, for bias, credibility, funding, and other details that might actually help put um, the source into proper context and give readers a, an idea of the credibility. So in 2021, Ground News had the opportunity to collaborate with Duke University to conduct a six-week research study addressing how using Ground News as a comparison tool can actually impact current feelings of polarization. And in the study, researchers recruited around 200 people from Duke's IBRC, and half of them were instructed to download the Ground News app for the study period. No one was told explicitly to consume out-party media, which is significantly different than prior studies that tended to be more heavy-handed um, in suggesting that readers uh, consume news from outside of their bubbles. So the average person tracked successfully in the treatment group spent 130 minutes using the app and read 52 news stories. They measured effective polarization at the beginning and the end of the study period as the difference in ratings between the favored party and political opponents. And the study found that exposure to outpartisan stories can actually reduce issue polarization and moderate positions. Um, centrist stories were found to reduce effective polarization, but any kind of partisan media tended to make readers more angry at their opponents. This was an interesting study because it found that just by giving readers access to a tool that gives them multiple perspectives, more context and bias ratings, they were naturally encouraged to explore different perspectives on an issue and that did reduce their sense of effective polarization. So that's why we find it so important to encourage active discernment and meet students where they are. Ground News offers a browser extension that is available on any news website. Um, it helps readers have a link to multiple sides of coverage of a given news event so that they never have to read just one. 
Um, pictured here, you can see ground news on a social media feed. This article was shared on Twitter and you can easily pull up the bias distribution and full coverage data of that as well. And of course, there's the mobile app and website. So to see how these tools are being used in a real life context, I'm happy to introduce Michael Wells, the library director at Wilmington College, so he can share his experience working with Grand News in the library and how it's helped him overcome a number of media literacy challenges that his institutions were facing. Thank you, Mel, and hello, everyone. My name is Michael Wells. I'm a library director here at Wilmington College in Wilmington, Ohio. Uh, just to begin, uh, my conversation with you. I wanted to give you a little bit of background on how I came to know about Ground News and where I have come from. Uh, prior to Wilmington College, I was the library director at Thomas More University, which is located in northern Kentucky, directly across the river from Cincinnati, about 10 miles south of Cincinnati, Ohio. Currently at Wilmington College, we're about 40 miles to the northeast of Cincinnati, uh, so within the same general region. However, uh, there are some very strong similarities and very uh, stark differences between the two institutions, especially how they relate with ground news and with library services. Uh, at Thomas More University, as the library director from 2018 to 2021, I had a lot of uh, early conversations in those first couple of years with our information literacy librarian about challenges that she was having uh, with faculty and with students on teaching uh, current events and, and uh, discernment of truth in news stories and bias within news stories. We used um, a graphic from Advance Media in the classroom often to depict the left-right political paradigm and also the truthfulness and where different news agencies tended to fall in um, that uh, that that scale, those various scales. But that was a static sort of image and it didn't really represent current events as things were happening in real time. Eventually, things did happen in real time at Thomas More, and we became uh, adjacent to a national news story that I'll talk about in just a moment. But uh, I left Thomas More in 2021, late November 2021, and took a position as the assistant library director at the local public library here in Wilmington. Uh, but in uh, the spring of this year, I was asked to come over and be the library director at Wilmington College. So it was a good opportunity for me to get back to academia, and it was an opportunity for me to once again work with the team at Ground News. Um, in specific to my experience at Thomas More, as I mentioned, from 2018 to 2020, we had a lot of challenges with trying to teach our students uh, it, issues of, of uh, digital discernment and understanding uh, news stories and bias within the news. We became, again, adjacent to a national news story when students from Covington Catholic High School were uh, involved in a news story and a news event at the Lincoln Memorial in January of 2019. Um, the Covington uh, Diocese is the overseeing body for Thomas More University and for Covington Catholic High School. So uh, we were adjacent to this news story and saw protests within the community, both at the Catholic Diocese, at Covington uh, Catholic High School, and uh, small protests at Thomas More University. Thomas More University, though, for the most part, reflected its relationship with the Catholic Diocese by being politically conservative, both um, uh, within the, the faculty ranks and within the student um, component of the college or the university. Uh, many of our students did attend Covington Catholic High School or um, would later, you know, transition from Covington Catholic to Thomas More University, and students from Covington Catholic would actually use our library. So being so close to this news story at the time, uh, as a librarian, you know, advising faculty and working with people who knew people who were involved in all of this, it really served as a good teachable moment. However, at the time, we didn't have a tool like Ground News to perform that that uh, teachable moment. So what ended up happening in late 2020, I, I heard of Ground News on a podcast. 
I contacted the team at Ground News uh, asking about if any libraries or K-12 institutions or anyone had subscribed at an institutional level for um, uh, like the entire campus or an IP address range and things like that. And at the time, no one had. And we were kind of the first to have this conversation. There were some other um, I think some high schools in different parts of the country that might have been had individual subscriptions, but we at Thomas More purchased uh, a certain number of, of access codes and we used those access codes, or I distributed those access codes to our faculty and uh, to our students for different assignments. Um, ironically, it was our uh, psychology faculty who were more pilot study, um, uh, a, a pilot study for us on the use of ground news. And uh, they assign created some assignments around the use of ground news in the classroom. However, I, I left Thomas More in November of 2021, and I didn't fully get to see the, the complete outcome of those assignments and understand fully how it was used at Thomas Thomas More. Um, to give you a little background on Wilmington College, as I say, the two institutions are quite different, even though we're uh, regionally located within the same sort of greater Cincinnati region. Wilmington College was established by the Quakers in 1870. It's the home of the uh, Peace Resource Center, the Barbara Reynolds uh, Archives, which is the largest collection of uh, post-atomic bomb um, uh, documents in the world. And we are a rural setting. We are primarily an agriculture college with liberal arts as, as a core value. Um, so we do uh, tend to be kind of an enclave of left-leaning thought in the midst of a rural conservative county in southwest Ohio. So there is some similarity with Thomas More because of the greater community of Wilmington being more conservative. But on campus, there's definitely more of a skew to the left side of the political spectrum. However, Ground News does fit very well for us as a subscription because we um, are really in the business of helping people discern truth and helping our students and faculty find tools that can help them understand events and, and current events and how things um, uh, transpire in our society these days. And um, in looking at how, uh, you know, all of this work will work here at Wilmington as it did at Thomas More, I think the, the key for a, me to remember as a library administrator is that no matter the political view of our customers, it's important for us to show empathy and, and impartiality here within the library. Um, information literacy is a key component of everything we do here at a small college and uh, expanding information literacy into the idea of digital discernment and helping our students understand what are good and bad news stories or how the wording may be written in certain stories or um, certain things that they think are news or actually blog posts and or um, very uh, questionable sources in some way. So with all of that, it's a teaching tool. I think Ground News for us is a teaching tool because historically we can point back to in, in larger conversations to things like the Fairness Doctrine, which existed from 1949 to 1987, was eventually completely repealed in 2011. And, and during that time, and uh, in, in it was even my time uh, as growing up, uh, the FCC oversaw bias within the news, and it helped to uh, control some of the things that are now out of control in our media climate. And, um, you know, without the fairness doctrine in place, you see the opportunity for uh, money to play into some of the, the bias that you see from corporate ownership of media. And uh, when that was a law or on the books as uh, oversight, we saw some, you know, responsibility taken uh, up by the federal government in this area. 
Um, of course, the challenges in a modern context are much greater with online media and social media regarding news. So I don't know how the fairness doctrine could be implemented in, in a modern context. But we also have to understand that there may need need to be some newer ideas around this because of the algorithmic impact of um, how our news is curated because of our browsing history and the places we go online and the things that we do. And, and as artificial intelligence begins to be a reality or continues to be a reality for us, you know, how will this algorithmic model impact our perception of events? Uh, so for me, I, I go back to the point uh, here on campus every day as I think about you know current events and news and how ground news relates to all this is that this is really a question of diversity. We want, if we want true diversity of thought, we have to broaden our worldview and we have to be able to respect others who have a differing opinion or, you know, at least have some insight of where they're coming from, where their misinformation uh, is sourced from. And I think Ground News helps to do that by having the blind spot tool and, and other functionality uh, and, and being able to see what it is you're even reading or, um, you know, evaluating your background uh, of the last month or the last few weeks of, of current events, y it can help inform, um, you know, some self-reflection on how we consume news. Um, at this point, I'm going to conclude my portion of this and, and hand it over to Michael Walmsley from Baker and Taylor, where he can describe for you what they're doing with uh, Ground News these days and their um, uh, opportunities that exist moving Ground News forward into the library space. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. Hello everyone, my name is Michael Walmsley and I'm head of the academic division at Baker and Taylor. Uh, I wanna thank you for attending our session today and joining us to discuss this very timely topic at the conference this year. You know, as I was preparing for this presentation, I was reflecting on all the Charleston conferences that I've attended, which it's hard for me to believe is into the double digits now. Uh, but I was thinking about how most years that I've been at Charleston, the sessions I've attended and the conversations I've had were predominantly about books and journals. If you ask me during my first Charleston conference whether I'd be talking about media literacy at a future conference, uh, I would have looked at you with a lot of skepticism. But a lot has changed in our society over the years and, and media literacy is a topic that is getting widespread attention. So here we are at a, at a library and publishing industry conference uh, talking about it. And I think it's appropriate because I believe libraries are in a great position to lead these conversations and to improve media literacy. Uh, and that's, that's really why Baker and Taylor is getting involved and why we are partnering with Ground News. Uh, we're working with libraries to address the issues that have been raised by my uh, fellow panelists today. And, and we are continuing the work we've been doing for 194 years as a company which is that, that we've been partnering with libraries as they promote learning, uh, reading, and information literacy in their communities and on their, on their campuses. Uh, we've done this mostly by assisting with their collection development and supplying books to their libraries. But even more broadly speaking, we have a history of assisting libraries with their local community goals and initiatives. And of course, libraries have always been about providing greater access to books uh, and other information resources in their communities. Today though, we're, we're seeing and hearing something different as we maintain our dialogue with, uh, with libraries and, and as we keep up with trends uh, in our industry. What, what library staff and faculty are telling us uh, is uh, number one, that they're, they're putting greater emphasis on media literacy uh, in their instruction on uh, their information literacy courses overall. Uh, they're also telling us that schools, uh, excuse me, skills uh, like lateral reading, uh, objective knowledge, and critical thinking are more important than ever. Uh, there's even uh, the, the term digital discernment that uh, you heard Michael Wells mention a minute ago, which I think is another, another great way of describing the kind of skill that's needed today uh, as you consume lots of, lots of news. Uh, Third, uh, faculty are telling us that they need better tools to improve their instruction in their courses. Uh, courses 
um, in areas uh, such as journalism, political science, mass media, and communications. Uh, and fourth, uh, we're hearing about many campus-wide initiatives that are being undertaken to teach students to better understand the difference between uh, various uh, digital resources and to become uh, more informed citizens. Uh, you know, and even in our daily, our, our own daily lives, we, we recognize the challenges of navigating the modern news environment. Uh, we see it in our own worlds, right? And of course, we all see the polarization and the divisiveness uh, in our society. So I guess just to summarize, you know, we at Baker and Taylor see media literacy as a timely and very necessary topic. Uh, and, and we see media literacy and the ability to evaluate news sources uh, as an important skill in, in today's world. And so when we met the folks at, uh, from Ground News and we saw the tool that, that they had built to better evaluate news sources, uh, we, saw, we saw it as fitting in very well to our portfolio of services and our overall mission as a company. It, it is a bit of a departure for us and certainly different than the book related services that we've offered for so many years, but like everyone else, we're adapting, especially with all the, the very dramatic changes that have happened in our world in recent years. Um, uh, but mostly, you know, we saw Ground News as service as, as very innovative and uh, an outstanding tool that academic institutions can use to, to uh, produce more informed, well-rounded students. So we're very excited about, about ground news and, and the role it can play in addressing the issues we're, we're, we're mentioning today. Uh, and we get even more excited uh, when we hear stories like the one um, mentioned uh, by Michael Wells uh, just a few minutes ago in his comments. Uh, he was talking about how uh, that, that, that the purpose and the use case for ground news was the same at both institutions he worked for uh, despite the fact that they're very different types of institutions with very different charters and perhaps uh, a very different prevailing political outlook um, or in political uh, viewpoints. Uh, but that's, that's the whole point of Ground News. Uh, there was a very teachable moment that occurred over the incident at the Lincoln Memorial and more importantly, the ensuing news coverage of that incident. Um, and thanks to the, uh, the, the, the great leadership and guidance uh, of, of the faculty and staff at the two universities. The students uh, were taught to find the truth, uh, to dig a little deeper, to find the truth and to discern the truth. And again, what better testament to what, uh, to what we're all trying to do and what uh, the ground news service can, can help you achieve. Uh, in our in our wider society too, not not just on college campuses. I hope that uh, all of this focus on media literacy will help us all find uh, more common ground uh, on key issues in our contemporary world. Um, that's certainly something we're all uh, we're all hoping for that we that we can find more compromise uh, as as people read uh, different viewpoints. And I think you know, that brings me to my to the last point that more of a, a personal note that I wanted to make, which is, you know, I attended a small liberal arts college uh, many years ago and, and um, majored in political science there. Uh, but I, I, I remember the term uh, objective knowledge being used a lot uh, at this, uh, as part of my education. And um, I, I really, I really feel like the focus on media literacy today and, and tools like ground news are helping to remind us of that very important concept, which is that you uh, you read from many different sources and, and you read from many different perspectives, and then you arrive at a more informed place and more knowledgeable and, and a wider base of knowledge. Uh, and usually that place that you arrive at is more reasonable and more centered uh, than, than when you started. Um, you also better understand the viewpoint of, of people from who have uh, you know maybe different perspectives than you, um, and, and you you also understand where they're coming from, and uh, I think that's that's how compromise happens when you're when you're willing you're willing to compromise more because you understand again the 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 perspective and the viewpoints of of others, and um, 
uh, I think ultimately that's what uh, we're all hoping for. So um, uh, that that brings uh, brings us to the end of our formal comments today. Uh, and uh, so let's we're going to transition into our question and answer period here. Um, when uh, we open it up to all of you to ask any questions uh, of the panelists. So with that being said, I'll, uh, I'll open it up. 